Welcome to The Photography Guy. I'm your host, The Photography Guy. Let's get started here with another great photo show. Hey, good morning, everybody. First of all, let me say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Hopefully you're going to have a fine day today and have some maybe supper prepared for you. Maybe you go out to dinner, but you know, the main thing is, is get those kids involved, get those kids back here with you uh, sometime uh, today so you can uh, give them a little hug and, and a high five uh, for being a great mom. Hey, I want to welcome you to The Photography Guy. This is episode number 55 for Sunday, May the 11th, 2014. I'm your host, Jack. I want to thank you for joining me here to learn more about your camera and making great photographs. Please check out my website at thephotographyguy.net. That's thephotographyguy.net. You can also comment on these shows, and I would hope that you would do so. If you're listening to this podcast on the audio side and you're out there saying, man, I wish I can see what he's talking about and see what he's pointing out, you can do that. All you got to do is go to my YouTube channel. That's 42 Technoman. The number four, the number two, Technoman. Please visit my new learning site where you can learn great things about photography and a whole lot more. We're going to have a bunch of stuff on it with Microsoft Office. Uh, you name it or you ask for it, and we will create the courses and the classes for you to be able to take those. We have a great staff uh, working on those classes, and we're trying to get them together as soon as we can. But hey, with every new site, there is a growing, uh, a, a weight to grow. There's a growth uh, spurt, and we have to get that set up. But it is at jtclearning.com. That's jtclearning.com. Right now, you'll find hours of photography training at a price that everybody can afford. Please, if you go there and sign up at jtclearning.com, please only sign up if you're going to take a course. Uh, I have people signing up, and then i got to go in there and delete you and get you out of there. Uh, so it's not anything to sign up for. You're not going to get anything there uh, you know, really for free. It's, it's a site you have to sign up, and you pay to take a course, just like going to college. We can't just walk in a, in a classroom and say, hi, I'm here, and go for free. So if you sign up, please sign up and take the course. And right now, I'll give you a special offer at the end of this show. Uh, there will be a special offer for you, so t stay tuned in. And listen, and we'll get you some uh, some some deep uh, pocketed savings. You can join our Facebook group, and I hope you do because we're getting a lot of people in that Facebook group. Uh, we're sharing a lot of great photographs, a lot of great stories, and uh, it, it's a wonderful group to be on. And if you're on Facebook, look, search for a group called Jack's Tech Corner. That's Jack's Tech Corner, and you can join that group. and And we would really uh, hope that you do doesn't cost anything you just have to uh you have to uh, apply you have to ask to be a member it is a closed group for obvious reasons so uh once again it's jack's tech corner so i've been receiving a ton of emails like tons like fifty thousand emails a week no not that many but anyway i've been receiving a ton of emails and people asking me all the time jack what is the proper use of tripods do i need a tripod um why would I want to bother with something I got to carry around? You know, so these are really, really good questions, and I want to cover those today. So today we're going to talk about the use of tripods, how we can use them, where we can use them, and why they are beneficial. So for my my audience here, the uh, the viewing audience, you're going to see we're going to switch into the studio here, and we're going to talk there about this stuff. So uh, go ahead and move over to the studio, and then we'll come back over here uh, to the computer, and we'll uh, wrap things up when we are done. So let's go ahead and make this transition over to the computer. If you have any questions, by all means, jump in the chat room. We are live, and we are on livestream.com. And once again, it's livestream.com. You can uh, throw your questions in there along the way, and I will take time to answer those as we go on. So let's go ahead. We're going to cut over to the studio. And we'll put this camera back over here like that. Um... Like that. Okay. Let's go ahead and move over to the studio here. So, and as I said, I actually do have uh, the chat room up there. Um, 
Uh, I do have the chat room up this morning, so I can see uh, Zach's in there. We're actually going to uh, we're gonna do some golfing this afternoon, so that's going to be pretty nice uh, to get out with my uh, with my son there and uh, hit some balls around a little bit. So we are planning on doing that this morning. All right, so we are going to put the uh, the chat room aside here uh, for a little bit. We'll just uh, stick it somewhere. Yeah, maybe we'll put it right behind me here on this bookcase. And we will now get underway here with our demonstration of the um, tripod. I think before we start, though, I had to get one more part there. I'm sorry. Just to uh, get, get the ball rolling here this morning. All right. So anyway, let's get let's get underway here. The first tripod I'm going to talk to you about is what I like to call my department store Walmart special tripod. Uh, and Zach in the in the chat room can tell you about this tripod. And he would tell you that this is a definitely a, a good tripod. He used it on a photo shoot we went on uh, about a year ago, I guess. We went downtown to the city. And in the city, we actually uh, worked, and we had this tripod out. Now, what I can tell you about any tripod, there's something on the tripod called a... I call it the striker plate. Now, and it's very funny because this is a striker plate. And I'm going to show you the improper way to connect the camera to this thing. And all it is is just the little piece of screws on the bottom of the camera. When you have these things, what I can tell you to do is do not lose the striker plate. If you do, this thing can go in the trash can. They're very hard to find replacements. I believe these companies do that on purpose. And the reason they want to do that is so you have to buy more tripods. Now, again, this is called my department store tripod. Um, my wife bought this for me for Christmas some, some years ago. It's still holding up. I like it. It has a nice handle on the side of it. It's an aluminum frame tripod, so it's, it's not real heavy. It does open up and it locks on the bottom. Then you can actually take and extend the legs. Now, on this tripod, it has two different, really, height settings, I guess. That would be one. Right there would be one height setting. And then, if you want to go higher, this is nice if you're taking kids' pictures. So, you can set this tripod up here and take pictures of kids because you can be closer to those children. At the very top of any tripod, there is a little ball, or there should be. If you don't see a leveling ball on the tripod... Don't buy it. Stay away from it um, because you want to be able to level your tripod up. And all you got to do is get that little ball and you would move your legs in and out until you get the little ball right in the middle of the red uh, little marker on the uh, level itself. That way you're sure your camera is going to be perfectly level when you're going to take a picture. That's the number one reason for having a tripod. It gets your camera perfectly level. How many times have you been home and you go to take a picture, you've been out somewhere and you get, you get home, you get that picture home and then you turn it, you're, you're looking to the left or to the right. It's not on a perfect, uh, a perfect kilt or kilter, I guess. Anyway, so we can take that actual photograph and I know we could take it in Photoshop, we could take it in Lightroom, we can straighten it. But the job of the photographer, folks, when you're a photographer, your job is to take a really, really good picture. Uh, off the top of the, uh, right off the camera you don't want to have to spend days editing all your pictures uh, if you go on a vacation we went on a cruise uh, a couple years ago with the kids it was a four-day cruise and we probably took you know you probably took 2,000 pictures in four days you want to edit every one of those and straighten every one of those pictures of course not so you want to make sure that that is a is a really perfect uh, picture itself now, with that, let's talk about number two reason for having a tripod. Because so many people remember or emailing me saying, do I really need a tripod? The second reason I like to take my tripod with me. We generally have one of our four kids will generally carry the tripod. I carry the camera. Somebody usually carries the backpack with all the gear in it, the lenses and everything. And then somebody usually takes my tripod and carries it along with us. The reason we do that is so we can do family photos now we can stand in front of the camera i can line everybody up i can set the timer on the camera and i run over and i can stand and get the picture 
That's the second reason for having a tripod, folks. It's unbelievably a pain. Yeah, I've done it, and it's a pain to try to Photoshop somebody into a picture, and, and we've done it many times. I can show you some years ago, uh, we have a picture that I had to Photoshop. I can't remember if I had to Photoshop myself in or my wife. Uh, but anyway, I had my wife and the four kids standing. It was it was uh, up at the, um, it was at a, a rapids. We were doing a, a rafting trip. So I had them standing there. And then I gave my, cam my camera to, I think, my wife. And I went around. I stood where I thought I would be. And then she took another photo. And I had to blend those two photos together. Here's the problem. If you don't have a tripod, the problem with that would be very simply, you can't get the same exact angle. You can't get the same exact fill for that picture. The light might shift just, just a quarter inch or a quarter of a different lighting. She might hold the camera a little differently than you did. She might click the shutter differently. There's so many variations. So it's hard to blend those pictures. So if you put everybody in front of your tripod, put your camera on there, you're going to get a perfect picture every time so that is the aluminum tripod like i said it's a very very nice one this happens to be an mx 2000 um i don't even know if there's a make who makes it obviously there's not anybody i don't see anybody on here uh, for making the tripod now another reason people use tripods in the studio is i'll throw this one out there to you because i talked to a uh a studio photographer is it's a safe place to put your camera. So if you have your tripod over here, you have your striker plate on the bottom of your camera anyway, and I'm out and I'm taking pictures of my uh, whoever. I have a photo shoot I'm doing. I'm even taking up pictures of a model. And uh, we're taking different angles, and I go over and I want to readjust the light or something. I can simply take my camera and lock it on my tripod, and it's sitting over there. Instead of laying it on the floor or putting it you know, out somewhere else, it can actually be on the tripod, so it's a lot safer place to have that. So that's another reason I have a tripod in a studio. This tripod is my, at this point, I guess my old tripod. Uh, there's actually one with the, the camera that you're viewing the show on, if you're viewing it. Uh, the uh, HD web camera is actually on a tripod mounted, and it's on a thinner tripod that I purchased. And I purchased it originally for... Uh, Another reason to have a backup tripod is I purchased it to put my speed light on it. So I was able to put a speed light on it and, you know, use it as, as a, a light, uh, as, as a light stand. If you don't have any light stands, uh, it makes it pretty inexpensive. I bought the, uh, I think it's the MX-1000 I can see across the room. And uh, again, this is the MX-2000. So the 1000 is just a little bit uh, thinner, but it costs about 20 bucks. The 2000 will cost you about 30 bucks. So again, very good tripods. I've used it a lot. Uh, like I said, my son Zach used it uh, on a photo shoot. He could tell you if you're in the chat room that um, that he used it and it worked out very, very well. All right. So the next thing we're going to tell you about is the new tripod that I bought. This is a Manfredo tripod. Now, these tripods are much more expensive. But, you know, as you move up in your photography and you start getting better and better with your photography, you're going to want to get a better tripod. Now, if you look back sometime at my YouTube videos uh, at 42 Technoman, I did an unboxing of this tripod. And the unboxing itself uh, will tell you all about it. But it is a Manfredo 190 XPROB. So it's a 190 X Pro. B. And it's a very, very solid tripod. It is heavier than the aluminum tripods, but it's solid to the point it's not going to go anywhere. It opens up again in three sections, but this one allows you to do so much more. And we're going to show you that. So here's my first section, just like the other one. So we can shoot, uh, you know, baby shots, little kid shots. There is something I'll point out with the Manfredo See, Manfredo or Manfrotto, however you want to say it, we'll say Manfrotto, is these two padded grips on the back. The reason those are padded, it tells you that the tripod should always be set up like this. And the reason that tripod should be set up like this is so when you're standing behind it, you're not tripping over the leg. The leg should be out in front of you at all times. The next thing I can tell you with the Manfrotto 
tripods. When you buy yourself a better tripod, you have to buy yourself a head for the tripod itself. The reason that is, is because there's so many different professional heads out there to put your camera on. So many different people like so many different types of heads. It is going to set you back. The tripod itself, I believe, is about $120. And then the head itself was probably about another anywhere. If you can get heads from anywhere from $50, 30 is, if don't buy it with a plastic, make sure these are metal. Uh, and we'll talk about that. But so about $30 to roughly $500 you can buy a head for. Of course, you can buy you can buy a tripod for $1,000. I've seen them. So it all depends what you're looking for and what you want to do with it. Um, now, what I liked about this tripod is it will do some crazy different uh, positions for you to take photos with. <clears throat> One is I can take these legs and I can actually take these legs and expand them out. So what that's going to allow me to do is if you're taking pictures of streams or creek beds, it allows you to get that camera way down low into the creek bed or the stream. So again, you just pull those out. I'm going to put those back. And we'll put this one back. Oh, just like so. And then it locks back in. Another thing I really liked about this uh, particular tripod. Well, let me get the, get these legs back together here. There we go. Another thing I really liked about this tripod is it will allow me to take the angle of this camera and put it down or up. But before we go there, let me tell you about the striker plate. This is the striker plate itself for this particular camera. They were nice enough on the bottom of it, and you can't see this. And somebody said before in this shows, Jack, why can't you zoom in? Because we don't zoom because uh, we're using a webcam, so it doesn't zoom. But on the front, it has an arrow and it says lens. So it gives us a place to put it on our lens. When I was at work one day, this is what I've seen and. I don't know. I guess if nobody teaches you something, then you would never know. They had the striker plate on the tripod. They took the tripod. They held the camera. And this is how they were trying to put it on. Uh, and they said, Jack, I don't know. This is very hard to screw this on. And, and it's very tough to do this. Uh, it's very heavy. Uh, yeah. And I was like, what in the world are you trying to do? So you have to take... The tripod and you will take your strike plate and unlock it there's a little thumb screw I told them on the bottom all you got to do is put this on your camera and they're like you got to be kidding and I said of course I'm not kidding I've been doing this for a long long time this is how you put your tripod together so we're gonna line it up and I like to make sure it's square and then we can mount the camera on. We can mount the camera on the actual tripod, just like so. Make sure it's snug because now we're going to do some weird things with it. So what I liked about this tripod was I can take this and use it for macro shooting. So for macro shooting, what I would do is simply loosen up my wing nut on the side, pick the camera up. You could turn it around, push the button on the bottom, and then push the camera down. It will actually pivot, just like so. You can see there that you can take the macro shots. You can pull it back a little bit to make it more balanced. Uh, so if you can see that, and I think you can on the video, uh, pretty sure anyway. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. But the camera is now mounted down. I pull this up a little bit so you can see. And that tripod is solid. So if you're taking pictures of bugs, bees, uh, whatever it may be, you have a very, very nice way now to take those photographs and have it on a secure tripod. It works really, really well. So, number three reason to have a tripod. Have a good tripod that will do multiple angles, and you can use it for macros and, and uh, put your tripod in many, many different uh, modes or ways of setting it up. And it, it's a very, very sturdy tripod. 
The fourth reason for using a tripod, and there's no way you can catch this photograph uh, hand-holding a camera that I know of. Uh, I've tried, and they've come out very poorly. And that way, the reason what you're doing is is taking uh, pictures of a with a slow shutter speed in low light. Uh, if you're if you're doing that, if you remember, now wait, you can take pictures in low light with a high ISO setting. We've talked about that a few times. But we're talking about using low light and a very slow shutter speed. You need a tripod. If not, you'll start to get camera shake. Is what you're going to get. And everybody says, oh, they're blurry pictures. That's not true. Uh, it's just that the camera is, the shutter is staying open so long you can't hand hold that camera. Now, there's two places I love to do this. First is taking pictures of water. We've talked about that a few weeks ago with the slow shutter speed. You need a tripod. This is nice, this angle thing, when you lay this camera down. It's nice because now I can take pictures right over the stream. I could put this tripod in the water, you know. Don't get too hyped up in your life about your gear. I mean, take care of your gear. But if you want to get a picture and you're looking at the autistic or artistic value of that picture, look at it and think, how am I going to shoot this picture? Then shoot the picture. If you get your tripod wet, so be it. You know, that's part of life. If you drop your camera in the water, well, you know, that might be a little different story. These tripods are durable. They're made to get a little bit wet. It's not going to hurt them. Wipe them off and you'll be fine. If they get a little squeaky sometimes, spray a little WD-40 on it, put a little bit of oil on there, and maintain your gear. But use your equipment. That's why you bought it, right? We want to use this gear to the most that we can use it for. So that would be another reason I'd want to have a tripod. We're going to take this, move it back up. You can see we can put it right back in there. Just like so. Another great reason to have a tripod. Number, what are we on now? Number five is if you're going to shoot HD video with your camera. Now, I have a colleague at work one time said, why would anybody want to buy a 35 millimeter digital camera with HD video capabilities? I've used it a lot because I used to agree with her. I said, I don't know. Why, why in the world would you ever want to do that? But I have shot a lot of HD video with my with 35 millimeter camera. I suggest you do the same. Turn it on video every now and then. Take some video. Learn how to do video. I will suggest one thing though. You don't have to shoot at 1080p unless you're doing something really, really spectacular. What you should be shooting at is 720p. So what I did, I actually turned my camera back down to 720p and I shoot at 720p. It just makes for a smaller file size, uh, that video itself. So, And then you pulled in something like we talked about Photoshop Elements Premiere. It will work with these cameras. This happens to be my Nikon, but it'll work with the Canons and the Sonys and probably whatever else can, uh, camera you're shooting with. You can also pull it into Lightroom, and you can do very limited edi editing in Lightroom. Myself, to be honest with you, I have come to love Final Cut Pro. I've been uh, still learning Final Cut Pro. I watched the kids do it at her school, and they blow me away. Uh, most of them learned how to use it on watch, by watching YouTube videos. So YouTube is a big, powerful influence in all of our lives these days. It teaches you so much, and it can show you so much uh, to be able to, to learn and do just by simply watching YouTube videos. So that is the Manfrotto tripod or Manfredo, Manfrotto, I like to call them. Uh, that is the tripod. This is the uh, ball mount here. Uh, this particular ball mount, if you want to look for this one, is the, uh, looks like the 496 RC2. 496 RC2 Manfrotto. Uh, again, it's a wonderful, wonderful mount. Uh, I've used it a lot, and I really, really love it. So, uh, it's a great tripod. I, I can't say uh, more about that. So we are going to remove the camera from this tripod. And now we're going to talk about one more type of device. I'm going to take a strike plate off of here. And what we're going to talk about now is something I've talked about in the shows. We've mentioned it before, why it's so important. And I'm just looking here to see what's going on. Um... To see what's in here. 
Uh, Dennis, uh, good morning to you. He says he loves the new Tamron 150 by 600 millimeter lens. That is something I'll be looking into uh, soon enough there. I hope to find something about the 150 by 600 millimeter lens. Um, I'm trying to see. Uh, let's see here what else we have in here going on in the chat room. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, and Peter's right. You can also ha hang sandbags. I forgot to mention that on your tripod and that tripod has a little hook also and the reason you hang a sandbag on it is to give your camera more stability and make sure that's not going to blow away in a big wind in a big uh, windstorm there so that is uh really nice uh peter you said you had your tripod and a monopod and you have not used it yet get it out there and start using it a little bit uh we're just talking here who else might be in the chat room and that's about it right now. Okay, very good. We got seven people uh, actually viewing the live channel right now at Livestream.com. But we only have uh, three people in the chat room. That always surprises me. So now we're going to talk about, Peter was talking about a monopod. This is a monopod. And I got this at my local department store, local Walmart, believe it or not. Because I didn't know how much I'd use it. Uh, and to be honest with you, uh, I'm going to show you something it's doing right now. So I'm going to have to buy a different one. Um, and I bought it for uh, really one main reason. I bought this because when my daughter was in in track and she throws javelin, I had my long lens, my 70 by 200 lens on the camera. And I just wanted stability is why I bought this thing. So I didn't think I needed to buy anything real expensive. But this thing is a little lifesaver. Once again, it's a monopod. So mono means one, right? So here's your one. That's what it looks like. And it goes all the way up to there. Just with these little sliders. But what it's starting to do with me on it. Now watch. It's locked right now in place. But watch what happens when I push down on it. Yeah. It's not locking as tight as it used to. And I don't see any way uh, with these clamps to make it any better. See, I mean, I could just push it right down. It used to work a lot better than that. And I don't know why it started doing that, but there's no way to tighten this thing up. So, be it what it is. Now, this one. Remember before when I said the, the students were trying to screw their their tripod into their camera? The monopod you do. I did buy myself a an actual um, a mount for this, but I don't use it much. Because I found when I'm using my 70 by 200 millimeter lens, the lens itself has a lens bracket on it. So, I can... To either have it landscape or turn it portrait on that lens mount. So I don't really need to worry about that. But you can screw this right into your camera. It only takes a second. And the thing, if you don't have a mount, you only are going to get portrait shots. And that's usually okay. Where I like this thing for is nature walks. So I'm out in the nature. I'm looking around. I got a good, steady, really, really good, steady uh, look here in my camera. Look, and I can hold on to it here uh, with the nice soft padded grip and it's just really light to carry around I carry this thing around like this most times uh, especially when I was at track meets or at sporting events and I just put the shoulder strap on my shoulder and that, that bar just hangs off the bottom of my camera so again that's a monopod another thing it's good for is uh, parents grandparents out there if you're taking pictures of your kids or grandkids and let's say you're in a gymnasium. We're taking pictures of a volleyball game or a basketball game or a wrestling match. If you have a tripod, chances are you're going to smack the person in front of you and then you can get into a big fight and probably get ejected from the game. If you have a monopod, you can just simply right here, right here, boom. I'm right there. I'm, I'm sitting. It's right between my feet. It's not going to hit anybody. And then I can take really, really good, stable pictures. And that's what you want. Because remember, low light in the gymnasium equals, you're right, some some shaky, uh, unsteady pictures. And then people go home and think they're all blurry and they messed up. And, you know, the trick is when you're shooting in a gymnasium, and I've shot thousands of pictures in gymnasiums, is high ISO setting, fast shutter speed, a monopod. Again, high ISO setting, fast shutter speed as you can get, and a monopod. Deal with whatever noise you have to deal with later on in post-production. 
but you don't want to worry about it here in your monopod. So you just screw the monopod right in the camera and you're good to go. When you're done, you just simply take it back off. And again, you just simply unscrew it. And don't put this in there tight. We don't need a wrench. And just like the strike plate when I, when I talked to you about the tripod itself, don't get a pair of pliers and, and tighten it down and break this little screw in here because then you might as well throw your camera away. There goes the $1,000. There goes $2,000. Chuck in the old garbage can to buy yourself a new camera. Just finger tight this stuff. It, it doesn't have to be, you know, gorilla in there or, or Hulk hogan in there or whoever. Just hand tighten it and it'll be good to go. All right, so that's that one. That's my monopod. So again, I am looking for a different monopod at this point. Uh, you know, something a little bit more sturdier. But, of course, uh, my daughter's about done with school anyway, so I don't know if I'll ever use it again, to be honest with you. But uh, for nature walks, I guess, probably I will use it there. All right. Let me see if there's any questions in here. We will look in the chat room now, see where we're at. Dennis just ordered a gamble head for that lens. Oh, really nice. Yeah, that'd be really nice. All right, so I was just checking out there who's in the chat room right now. Okay. So seeing no questions in the chat room, we are going to go back over to the other side of the room, back to the computer itself there. So I'll switch those cameras over, and we shall go back over there. Let me do that. Okay, very good there. So we'll bring this microphone back up here. Um, there we go, right there. Let me get back over here a little bit so I can see what's going on. Okay. Um, switch my camera back over. And there we go. Okay, folks, so hopefully everybody uh, got the idea of how to use tripods, why we want to use tripods, and it's just a huge benefit, uh, benef beneficial, beneficial, benefactor. Anyway, it's, it's huge that you have yourself a good tripod and uh, that you maybe get that monopod also just for those days and those instances where, where you may need it and you might want to uh, have that out there and have it available to you. Uh, it never hurts to have stability in your pictures. Folks, I want to thank you very much for tuning in to the show today and uh, spending some time here with me this morning on The Photography Guy. I have to say a special thank you to Dennis, who's on the West Coast, and we are on the East Coast. So the time difference there is he got up a little bit earlier this morning to uh, join into the show and to uh, kind of hang out there with us this morning, and I really appreciate that. Thanks, everybody, for tuning into the show. If you're downloading this from iTunes, again, please watch and subscribe to the YouTube videos. And those YouTube videos can be found at 42 Techno Man. Once again, it's 42 Techno Man. I still have my DVD collections available, and a lot of people are taking advantage of those. You can find the DVDs at jackstechcorner.com. Click on the pull-down link and you can purchase one of the Photoshop Elements training DVDs and they are there for you to uh, enjoy and learn from. If you want to learn Photoshop Elements 12, I don't have a DVD for that one. And people are asking, they've been emailed saying, Jack, where's the DVD for Photoshop Elements 12? Oh my God, we want to learn. You have to go to the new online learning site and that is at jtclearning.com. It's www.jtclearning.com. Dot com, you can sign up and there you will learn Photoshop Elements 12. At the top of the corner of the uh, page, you'll see where it says Courses. Click the little pull-down menu, click on Photography, and then click on Photoshop Elements 12. Please, once again, do not sign up for jtclearning.com unless you want to take a class. If you want to take the course and sign up and then sign right up for the course itself, and then you would be subscribed. So many people are signing up going, I didn't know I had to pay for the course. Yes, you have to pay for this course. 
This course is $40, so it's very, very inexpensive to learn how to use Photoshop Elements. Folks, how much did you pay for your Photoshop Elements? $100, $120 maybe, maybe $79. So you buy something and you don't know how to use it. Well, you want to pay the extra 40 bucks and learn with me. I've been teaching Photoshop Elements since version 1. Now we're on version 12, so I do know the product very well inside and out. If you do sign up and you do want to subscribe to the course, please do so and use my coupon code JTC5 at checkout. If you do that, you receive $5 off. See, I told you I was going to save you some money and weigh your wallet down a little bit. Put that extra 5 bucks back in your wallet and use that for something important like uh, maybe some put that towards your wireless triggers or your new 150 by 600 millimeter lens or something. But save that extra 5 bucks on me. So the course is going to cost you $35 right now. And that's for a limited time. Folks, once again, that's at jtclearning.com at a very big discounted rate. So again, check them out at jtclearning.com. Folks, take care. Hope you have a great work week. And until next time, keep those shutters clicking, keep your editors editing, and I'll see you back here soon on The Photography Guy. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in to The Photography Guy. I am a photography guy, and I'll be here once again next time for more photography tips and tricks. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the show and enjoy the music.